action in the Pac-10. Currently, seven teams in the conference have returned to black game shoes. Only Oregon State, Stanford, and UCLA are still wearing white. Coming up is our next featured game of the week. USC came on strong in the end against Arizona State, but fell short. The Trojans travel north to play Oregon and Eugene, a team that was in it till the end against Utah. USC Oregon, next. Then same, huh? Company stop salesman. You While the series between USC and Oregon goes clear back to 1915, these two teams haven't played each other since 1988. However, in 1987, they played in Oregon, and Oregon defeated USC. Schizophrenic team, USC. They lose uh, against Memphis State. They beat Penn State. They lose to Arizona State. All three games at home. Well, I'll tell you, against Arizona State, I got to watch that on TV. They were out hit, and they were out hustled, which is very unusual for a USC football team. Mm -hmm. USC, and in particular its defense, is trying to get it back. It's trying to find that intimidating and intense play that carried the Trojans past then the fifth-ranked team in the country, Penn State. Here's Dennis Kirkpatrick in Los Angeles. Remember the USC defense, the intimidating one, the one that stuffed fifth-ranked Penn State? Well, against Arizona State, they didn't show. We went out like it was going to be a regular game, at least the first half. And, uh, and we, we finally realized that, hey, listen, we're in the Pac-10. This is Arizona State. We have to play some ball. We came out the second half as a defensive standpoint and played some ball. It's got Larry Smith concerned, especially when his defense was supposed to be the strength of his team. They seemed to come around during the fourth quarter against ASU, but it was too late. Uh, we are not a uh, good team at this particular time. And we're just a, a young team that's still trying to get some rhythm and some consistency, and we don't have it yet. And the road doesn't get any easier for USC. For the first time this season, the Trojans have to leave these friendly confines of University Park. First stop, Outson Stadium, Eugene, Oregon, one of the toughest places they had to play. That's a challenge in itself, especially how we're going to react to playing not in the Coliseum, you know? And after, after, lo after losing two games in the Coliseum, I mean, that is embarrassing. That's really embarrassing. We're going to have to, we have to st step up a notch. We don't lose them in our own house, we call it. So we go in there uh, uh, with our backs to the wall, basically, is what I'm not scared. Which team shows up? Which defense shows up? We'll find out on Saturday. In Los Angeles, I'm Dennis Kirkpatrick, Pac-10 Preview. All right, thank you, Dennis. Now, as far as Rich Brooks and the Oregon Ducks, they were flat out embarrassed against Utah, losing 24 to 17 last week. Well, Rich was very concerned going into this football game that they'd be a little bit flat. He said they were the most lethargic he has ever had a ball club going into a ball game. That was like they were sleepwalking, Don. Mm -hmm. We're told that a lot of the Oregon players simply felt they didn't prepare well for the Utah game, but that will not be the case with USC today. As the Ducks enter the practice arena this week, they are trying to forget a shocking loss to the Utes of Utah. The coaches are doing their best to make sure there is no repeat performance. All eyes on redshirt freshman quarterback Danny O'Neill, who suffered his worst game in three starts. O'Neill was sacked eight times, intercepted once, and was involved in two costly fumbles as the Ducks were grounded 24-17. He is determined not to let it happen again. I'll be honest with you, I don't think I was ready for Utah, and I don't think I studied their, uh, their defense enough, but I guarantee you, uh, uh, this next week, I'm gonna, you know, really hit the films. I'm gonna be ready for USC's defense. But the truth be told, O'Neill wasn't the only lame duck Saturday. The entire team was in a funk and never recovered. Certainly, Utah is not anywhere in the realm of the USC uh, in talent and uh, the level of their uh, play. So, uh, if we played the same way against USC uh, after six offensive plays, it might be. 40 to nothing. Brooks is counting on a return to form that propelled the Ducks to season opening victories over Washington State and Texas Tech. The homecoming to Watson Stadium where the Ducks have won 10 straight. This is a pivotal game for the Ducks. With a victory, they remain alive in the Rose Bowl race and keep their hopes alive for a third consecutive bowl appearance. A loss could be devastating with four of the final six on the road. In Eugene, I'm Todd McKim for Pac-10 Preview. Four of the final six on the road. What a difference a year makes. They had seven home games last year. This is a big game. Well, a couple of tough road games, no question about it. But, uh, you know, it all starts up front again. But Larry Smith has said, we want to get back to Trojan football, knock people down. You look at the two offensive lines, I call them even at this point. 
When you go to the running back, well, Sean Burwell out with an ankle injury. This will be the second week he's gone. Mazio Royster back from an injury. The edge goes to USC. Quarterbacks, well, Danny O'Neill, I think he got a lesson. On the other hand, Reggie Perry probably will split time with Curtis Conway for USC. The edge goes to Oregon in this area. Receiving-wise, excellent tight end and good speed by the wideouts. Even though Johnny Morton has 14 receptions for SC, it goes to Oregon. The Ducks good in that category. Defensively, not much question. Eight starters back for, for the Ducks. Three of them missed the Utah game, incidentally, but they get it in the defensive line. They get it in the linebackers. And, of course, premier free safety Eric Castle leads a group in the defensive back category. Kicking, again, Greg McCallum, a premier field goal kicker and they have a solid punter they get the edge in the kicking game intangibles well USC has got to develop an identity uh, we're not sure which team's going to show up I'm sure Larry Smith knows which one he wants to show up and Oregon on the other hand they've got to regain that winning attitude now they stumbled a bit as far as that Utah game they were on a roll they have high hopes they want to get that third straight bowl game we'll be back with a final comment and Heinrich's hunches in just a minute